Today, we will talk about how to calculate after-tax real rate of return, which is the actual financial benefit of an investment after accounting for the effects of inflation and taxes. The after-tax real rate of return is the actual financial benefit of an investment after accounting for the effects of inflation and taxes. It is a more accurate measure of an investor's net earnings after income taxes have been paid and the rate of inflation has been adjusted for. Over the course of a year, an investor might earn a nominal rate of return of 12% on his stock investment, but the real rate of return, the money he gets to put in his pocket at the end of the day, will be less than 12%. Inflation might have been 3% for the year, knocking his real rate of return down to 9%. And since he sold his stock at a profit, he will have to pay taxes on those profits, taking another, say 2%, off his return, for an after-tax real rate of return of 7%. Let's be more specific about how the after-tax real rate of return is determined. The return is calculated first of all by determining the after-tax return before inflation, which is calculated as nominal return X. For example, consider an investor whose nominal return on his equity investment is 17% and his applicable tax rate is 15%. His after-tax return is, therefore, 0.17 X, 1 to 0.15, equals 0.1445 equals 14.45%. The after-tax real rate of return is figured after accounting for fees, inflation, and tax rates. The nominal return is simply the gross rate of return before considering any outside factors that impact an investment's actual performance. Your after-tax real rate of return will give you the actual benefit of the investment and whether it is sufficient to sustain your standard of living in the future, because it takes into account your fees, tax rate, and inflation. Here are three key takeaways. 1. The after-tax real rate of return takes into consideration inflation and taxes to determine the true profit or loss of an investment. 2. The opposite of the after-tax real rate of return is the nominal rate of return, which only looks at gross returns. 3. Tax-advantaged investments, such as Roth IRAs and municipal bonds, will see less of a discrepancy between nominal rates of return and after-tax rates of return. Hope this would help. Thanks for watching.